the big news this week is that I have a new this, processor. This cursor's been here the entire time. Really... <laughs> I noticed the cursor earlier, and uh, I didn't say anything because it was bound to annoy someone. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben, that is Jordan, and over there is Pedro Mateus. And look, I've even updated our little things. I changed it with the colors match because it kind of worked. Uh, there, uh, I can do the thing. I'm floating, doing that. <laughs> doing it all by myself, man. I don't know. D- D- Domo origato. We, we're trying to do the robot yeah. to get it all lined up. Uh, that is a thing. How's everybody doing? Watching this live on Twitch. Uh, I hope you're watching. Maybe you're listening. Some people are listening in the Discord. Regardless, help in this forum. Cocaine Voltron. We got a big, chunky show for everybody tonight. But first, we need to hear how awesome Pedro's new 5800 X3 day CPU is finally you got rid of that antique. What were you running before? <laughs> 3700X. Bitch, why'd you get a 3800X? <laughs> because, as it turns out, uh, the, those 96 megabytes of L3 cache actually make a difference. They do. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I've, I've wanted to top up this X570 with the best um gaming cpu before you know a few years from now and i get a new uh, motherboard so just g- grab the best one and the 5800 x3d is the best one for gaming in this particular uh generation so yeah that's that's what i'm running now <laughs> and it runs really well the thing that i noticed made the most difference was actually in the talos principle I ran the 37. The, yeah. the Talos benchmark? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know what? Showing off how well The Witcher 3 runs, if that game's too new for you. That's the thing. Well, um, I got the, the Series Sam um, Fusion benchmark, too. Yeah, there's that. In the Talos principle, uh, it went from, uh, with the 3700X, it went from 279 FPS with everything on high at mm-hmm. 2560 by 1440 to 343. <laughs> It's like, okay, that's a sizable improvement. Let's, uh, we're going to call that a win. <laughs> it's just very nice. We did nice. have a fun moment in Discord. We were running um, Geekbench. Oh, and, yeah. The, uh, the, there was the Geekbench off. <laughs> yeah. E- the EP measuring contest. I was in here dicking around with things, and I'm like, oh, wait, there's a Geek. Oh, yeah, all right. Let me just run this real quick. I was surprised. What was it that the multi threaded on this fucking antique? Um, uh, yeah, it was better than my 3700X because it has More 24 course. threads instead of 16. <laughs> yeah, which I was like, I did not expect to even, because this is like first-gen Ryzen. But like, yeah, extra threads, and yeah, if you're counting like uh, the amount of work that 24 threads can do versus just 16, yeah, it's well, probably Well, I mean, it was only be- a couple of hundred. I, I, <laughs> I fully expected to have a good laugh. When I ran it, Pedro is what I'm getting at. I'm like, oh. You got like 11,000, which now with a 5800X3D, it actually matches your score hmm. <laughs> on eight less threads. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was 100% expecting. It's like, look at the progress we've not that much. Um. So, how, how has your life improved, Pedro, now, now that you have the 5800X3D? Yes. Like, um, are, is, the sun, is the sun brighter? Are the birds singing a lot sweeter? Do you sleep better at night? Well, the crows are certainly making a lot more noise outside my window, so I'm probably going to be dead in a couple of days. You have crows, or do you have ravens? <laughs> ravens, they're they're the big ones. <laughs> it's oh. it's, it's, a, it's, it's they a feast are big. for the crows. They get like up to my knee. It's like, oh, you you crows guys are bigger. Than- <laughs> man, oh, oh man, I, I I look forward to just like Pedro walking down the street one day, and then just like a fucking condor swoops down and just grabs him. <laughs> Or maybe Pedro's secretly really tidy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I it's mean, like the thing with one the, over here isn't particularly tall, so yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like the thing with the, the, the picture of Jill with the giant laptop. I'm like, is that is that, is that tiny Jill, big laptop? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, uh, Jordan, you've gotten a year older. Yes. The wheel of uh, time has turned yet another tick. Indeed. I... I Turned 33 yesterday, I, as I was talking about in the pre pre super shows, and I aged all at once because that's how it works. Mm-hmm. My birthday rolls around, and then I, I do an entire year's worth of aging. You just hear the bones crunch, and uh, yeah, no, it was, it was good. I had, uh, I had the week off, I slept through most of the week, which was pretty good. Apparently, right. I needed that. 
Uh, Foxy was kind enough yesterday to run me through a uh, one shot of uh, Cyberpunk Red with uh, with some folks. What so is that? That's the tabletop version of Cybertruck. Uh, I, I, I you, you, usually usually I got to be the dungeon master. So like it's, a desktop PC? Or? No, or no, like a like a tabletop RPG. So, okay. Yeah, we, the we, Dungeons we, and Dragons, but with Cyberpunk. Exactly. I mean, like, how, how do you deal with the dildos? So. <laughs> I, I mean, the, 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 the dildos do 1d10 worth the dildos. let's be honest, that first launch of that game was just smothered in dildos. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it, I, I usually have to be the dungeon master, so it's nice to be a player for once. So thanks a lot, Foxy. He also bought me some dice. Got some gifts from some other people, uh, which uh, thank you, Jill, for paying for my copy of Citizen Sleeper. So <laughs> What's I can that? check. I don't know. It's, it's an RPG. It got, like, demoed. Um, it, 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 one of the Steam New Games Fests, and it seemed really interesting because it's like, um, it's like, it's a little, it's like a text-based game, but not quite. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, it caught my interest. It's apparently very story heavy. I'll, I'm looking forward to checking it out. Right on, right on. Uh, I am. We're, we're going to be driving with the uh, dangerous double click this evening on the SS uh, Nightmare Train because it is that time of year where the left mouse click button, the micro switch wears out, and. This one was exceptionally fast. It showed signs on Thursday. I'm like, ooh, you're getting a little dodgy. I'm like, of course, what do you do? You immediately procrastinate. You're like, yeah, maybe next week I'll order a replacement. And um, it just went ham when I got home this afternoon. I was like, okay, you got three options. We can double click, possibly triple click, or no click. So it's like launch codes and all that. Kind of fun times. Played some track mania. Come hang out with us. We did that on Friday. We do Linux and laps gets to the points. Bunch of people coming hanging out. Um, if you like arcade racing, come visit that. We'll be back Tuesday. And I also got this guy. You can't hear that, can you? It's not too I loud. Yeah, bonk, bonk. It hear bonk, bonk, it's bonk, bonk. listenable, but it's not loud. Do you hear the difference between that and yes? <laughs> okay. Small difference. Uh, I finally yoinked this off of uh, eBay. And apparently, apparently people, if you squint, there's no way you, you might be able to see it. There's like this fractional chip. Like it might look like a spot on the knob. And the guy was giving it away effectively because it was ruined. Ah, literally unusable, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, dude. <laughs> In the description, he's like, this is the third one. I've sent the other two back. <laughs> <laughs> literally unusable <laughs> literally and, um, unplayable I was like okay fine whatever and uh, yeah this is the thing that took an adventure it's like a week and a half to uh, get from my house to like six clicks down the road because mm. it kept taking trips to the post office and back I don't know ah. I gave up just a shrug emoji it's like putting the other things in the post which is nothing like the, you can put the horse in the post you well, I mean, there, there's a limit to how many, how much horse you can like have in a package before they start charging you out the nose for insurance. It's just like standard FedEx bullshit. It's the Steam Linux update of the week. How about Bigger, that chuggy UI? Better, stronger pitcher. That's what we got this week. Big Pictures now available for testing. Yes, that's right. It's not just in the realm of Steam Deck odors anymore. You too can experience uh, all the goodness. I mean, you can enable the new interface. I mean, yes, this is, and you're like, man, that really looks like it's for the Steam Deck. Because it was. You get a new home screen, universal search, controller configs, and all that. I did it. I played the home game. I downloaded it. Look at this. They even got like, oh, what is it? it .ex. Have you got to run this through Wine? Nay, it works under Linux. You just got to throw the tag in there. Make sure you're in the Steam beta. Launched it. Slammed right into this monitor over here. Why? Because <laughs> that's monitor number one. And it ignored primary monitor flags, which are, I understand just came out last week. Um, I got to add the new Steam Big Picture. That's what I told uh, Pedro. Because we're just like, yeah, I was like, yeah, it's the fourth application I've run across in my life that ignores that because that's like a big thing with games you might have run yeah. into. <laughs> it's a wee slow. It's a little sluggish. Oh, oh, oh yes. <laughs> on, on, on those high resolution screens. Oh, man. It's. Yeah, there, there's there's no hardware acceleration, as far as I can tell. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it hit a little bit heavy on the CPU. Even at, I 
it, my leftmost monitor is 2560 by 1440. It works, but it hit the 5800X 3D like it owed it some money. I guess, um... Well, the, the, the I, extra I, IPC isolated you. instance. <laughs> I mean, there's not been reported to anybody. Yep. No, no, yep. no, no, no one's mentioned it whatsoever. Very laggy. <laughs> Very laggy. Yeah. Uh, no, it, what I'm looking forward to is now that that is available, uh, you know, poorly working as it is. There's 18 pages in the new form. <laughs> yeah, okay. pe- people, people are really trying to figure this shit out. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, I want that like right side overlay that they have on the deck because that's where all the FSR and everything else like the uh, per game profiles and everything is. I want people to figure out how to get that working on the desktop version because that's going to unlock a lot of very, very nice things. And I, I, I look forward to playing with it. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I don't know. It's 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 a start, right? Like, right. They, they, they had a lot of time to control and tune the experience on the Steam Deck, which is clearly what this is for. Steam Deck does not have a UHD screen that it's got to do all the rendering on CPU for. Very tiny but, screen. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, it uh, def- definitely needs some tender, loving care to make it useful. I, d- I don't know. I I have a very limited use case for big picture mode, and that is to like, go into the in Steam browser to go look at my curator connect offers. Okay. So like, I I, lo- I look forward to having like an actual console style experience that I can I can throw up. I on, think like yeah. maybe possibly because I'm sure like a lot of you at home. Uh, I go into t- Steam Big Picture mode when I forget that the controller's already on, mm. and I hit the on button, and, and you go fuck. <laughs> like, well, let's um, take care of that. But hey, I'm glad it's there. I'd like somebody uh, if you have an original Steam machine, see if you can get this up and running. I just want to watch it catch on fire. Oh man. <laughs> Sandy, get on it, <laughs> dude. Wait, is, is, I think I think that I think that uh, 860M or whatever, whatever that video card is, that's not even in the NVIDIA drivers anymore. That's in the legacy branch now. Probably not. Um, it was based on the Maxwell uh, chip because it was um, it, it was yeah, effectively it, it, like a, a mobile version of the 750. Yeah. Mm. So if it it's probably right at the cusp if it hasn't already been dropped yeah <laughs> yeah i i i know i know the 10 series are next on the chopping block and i'm yep. like oh come on let's, uh... <laughs> don't worry you'll be able to use the uh... wait no they didn't open source though um, <laughs> no <laughs> no you gotta, yeah, gotta, gotta uh... pray that they they get those patches working for nvk uh but you, you know maybe maybe i can use some of steam's pricing tools to help me uh I, I don't know. Buy buy a new computer. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, I I don't honestly I don't think this will affect the customer as much. But yes, Steam is updating the pricing tools and the pricing recommendations. If you're a game developer and you want to set like accurate uh, regional pricing, why now, would you want to uh, do that? Yes. Takes why the, Why would you want to do t- that? Takes the fun <laughs> and spice out of it, man. <laughs> uh, and. To be fair, like I said, I don't think this is going to affect us uh, consumers uh, all that much because even before the euro and the dollar were on par like they are right now, the game devs were already um, basically pricing games one-to-one between euros and dollars. So it doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, you're going to be paying whatever it says on the thing or like everyone does on Steam, you're going to wait two weeks, there'll be a sale, and then you'll get it like 20, 30, 70, 80% off. Like everyone or, does. Or, or, or you play the Humble Bundle game. The one nice thing, yeah. though, is that they're adding a CSV import-export support, which, you know, I, I as, as someone who likes arbitrary data and manipulating that, CSVs are great. So <laughs> glad to see that they're providing some basic functionality to export your prices. And, you know, even, even have like a little CSV export to make sure that you have an easy way of making sure your games are priced appropriately. It's it's something, right? Like, the, yeah. the, the big complaint with Steam is like, oh, they're taking so much of our cash so they're turning around and saying like well here's how you get the most out of it and they're not uh, actually pushing this on people if you don't want to do it you have that price and you want the those prices to stick you can yeah they they say it at the bottom it's like yeah no these are these are all recommendations your pricing is between you and your customers right all right. Um, something that we want uh, to be between us and Valve is some new games, and uh, maybe can can we extrapolate from this? Um, 
we gotta spin the wheel of Boca Boca Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, the U.S. Uh, PTO, the Patent Trademark Office, uh, lists two records filed by uh, half, uh, by Valve uh, in September for Neon Prime under the categories of goods and services in computer game software, electronic game software, video game software, computer game program, downloadable, downloadable movie film via internet. Um, so, what what does that mean? We don't know. Valve is always working on <laughs> sneaky stuff behind the scenes. How do you write an entire article about this? You're going to power their way through it. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, no, they're they're gonna do it. They they have some quote for some from some dude on a forum who was like, "Yeah, dude, I totally worked at Valve. I think it's like some FTL shipbuilding game." My which, dad worked for Nintendo Valve. Right, like we're 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 at, we're at this level of uh, of of speculation. Uh, and and here's the thing: I look forward to looking at the leaked concept art in about eight to twelve years after they've worked it out that like, yeah, we we had a cool idea, it didn't pan out. Or laid law leaves How again dare you? and releases How the story. Dare you? How dare you? This is one hundred percent, one hundred percent guaranteed. The RGB controller software for the new index because it's going to blink. It could, it could be <laughs> just a software control for that. Yeah, it could very well be. <laughs> Neon Prime. I mean, it's, well, it's going to be like it's going to be a rainbow for your head, Pedro. I mean, <laughs> if if, it, if it's if it's uh, listed under goods and services, that could. Uh, and again, like let's let's fucking spin the wheel of booga boogie here, man. Like this is uh, this is complete bullshit. This is purely from the ether of my imagination. <laughs> but like maybe maybe it could be like a live service or like an ongoing game thing. That's something that Valve really has. Well, they they have some experience with with uh, CS:GO and. Um, hey and Jordan, hear me out. We have but, Amazon Prime. What if we had Steam Prime? Stream. What if they were? What if they were finally going to implement the thing where we could get a subscription service to Steam? Dude, if if here here's the thing, if Valve started Steam Prime and they're just like, yeah, by the way, all those shows that you like, like Raised by Wolves, all this shit, we're gonna we're just gonna fund new seasons. Oh, yeah. My God, they <laughs> we're take we're becoming the new Netflix this yeah. time for real Z's. We get Netflix at home. <laughs> oh, dude, I would be so happy if we could um, get the equivalent of um, what is it called, Game Pass from yeah, Microsoft, uh, yeah, or some, some, uh, yeah, Electronic Arts is uh, EA, EA Access, Play. yeah, EA Play, yeah. yeah. Or that EA would, play. Yeah. <laughs> um, but have that option for like 20 bucks a month to make it opt in for developers that want like, you know, a little taste of whatever. I'd 100% be on terms with that. But yeah, it would, it would be dope to see a new Valve IP. It would be nice to see like a new yeah. game from Valve. We don't know what this is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it could be a game. It might not be. Valve did say uh, last year that they had multiple titles in development. So that's a possibility. And which mm-hmm. I get to think of like, okay, outside of Alex, Alex was a hit but it was a niche hit for the seven people that had the equipment yeah, to play it correctly you, 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 you need you needed a vibe but like it it still shows their valve is capable of like putting out good games they, they can but i had to go back and look i'm like wait a minute what was the last pc title they released and turns out that was artifact yeah. that was artifact and <laughs> that i think was a very harsh reminder to valve that a little bit out of touch with the making games that didn't I, uh, it I, I, didn't hit, man. I no, checked, no, no, the, no, no, I checked no. the depot on that. They last touched that game in 2018. After saying we, we're, we're still going to work on this, we're going to retool. There's not been a touch. Yeah, Steam oh yeah, TV. no. It, yeah, they it, just it, it, it. It, came, it came super fucking late, right? Like it was competing mm-hmm. against MTG Arena. It was competing against Hearthstone. Um, yeah, like uh, it was. It was. It was. It was a solution in, in search of a problem, right? And. And both I, I Hearthstone and uh, MTG Arena, they had like the short plays. It's like you get a game in that's like 10, 15 minutes at most done. But uh, what, what, freaking what artifact was, was forty five minutes for a single game. There's I, I, no fucking way. I, 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 I think. I, well, and that's the thing. I think you, I think it was a precursor to like the NFT backlash, right? Like yeah. magic cards. Are, <laughs> magic cards are like the OG non fungible tokens, right? But they're uh, fungible. So, they're, yeah, they're, well, they're real. <laughs> I, I, not, 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 not as fun. To, well, I mean, yeah, but either, either way, the, the, the point is di- digital card games. That's what a lot of these, but like, these NFT are the ones games I like, were. Pedro. <laughs> well, no, no, yes, no, I, I like mean, MTG too. I played MTG for many, many years, but yeah, those are those tokens are very fungible. <laughs> I, I, I mean, but that's that, that, that's not really my point. My my point is that like a lot of this digital asset, digital ownership stuff, like yeah. artifact, is an expression <laughs> of that, and we are we we saw a much larger backlash uh, to to that with like NFT gaming, and I think like it's it's the same thought process it's the same thing it's the same reason that people are resistant to it that, that was more mm-hmm. the point i was making so we did get a new version of vk d3d proton 
Which oh, we, got, we got to talk about Eggy first. Oh yeah, we do. We're getting there. <laughs> The new uh, Proton GE 738 got released. It has a couple of new fixes for Uncharted. You know, perfect timing because that was the game that came for free with my 5800X 3D. Peter, you've downloaded uh, it. Have you played it? Yes, I have downloaded it. I have not started it yet. <laughs> God damn it. I knew there was going to be a butt in there. I somewhere. tried to start it. Admittedly, I okay. tried to start it uh, before I noticed that this uh, was out and it didn't work. I mm-hmm. just tried with Proton Experimental, so it's like, uh, we're, yeah, we're going to wait. <laughs> and apparently, yes, I had to use uh, GE, so I have yet to try this. Tomorrow is probably going to be the day. But uh, yeah, it's new version of a uh, Glorious Egg Roll Proton. Might want to give it a look. <laughs> what? Uh, what What else does it come with? Uh, oh, yeah, the, the other thing in here is they included uh, the Overwatch 2 patches in this version. Uh, but... This is this is Proton. This is not for running non Steam games. <laughs> there is a version of wine that Eggy produces for G-Y, running, yeah. yeah, for <laughs> running for running non Steam games in Lutris and whatnot. This these were included just in case it fixes something for any other games. But yeah, don't use this to play Overwatch. Don't do it. <laughs> don't. What do you what what do you use to play Overwatch? Uh, wine G. Wine G. Which is yeah. yeah. I know it, precisely nothing about Overwatch, so uh, <laughs> I guess uh, you have to get like your own launcher for that or something. I mean, Lutris, Lutris, yeah, yeah. It uses Battle.net because Ugh. Activision. Yeah. <laughs> it's yep, a free to play yep. game too, isn't it? Except you need a contract uh, mobile phone in order to be able to even log into it. There's a whole thing around it. <laughs> don't what? Don't you? Don't you guys have phones? This is this is this is Blizzard. Don't you guys have phones? <laughs> Entertainment. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> So if you're willing willing to give them those uh, number digits, they're good. Mm-hmm. All right. Yep. All right. But now, but now, now we can talk about VKD 3D Proton. Yeah, I don't know if I want to talk about it now. Well, <laughs> too bad. I really want to. All it right. has tickled my pickle, and your pickle also needs tickling. Lady and pickle. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, new re- new release version two dot seven. Uh, they are coming out with heightened heightened driver requirements. You're going to need Mesa twenty two or Nvidia five ten. Uh, if you want to, if you're going to want to be consuming these changes here, uh, they added a magic cache because apparently some games DX12 properly, but as we discovered with Elden Ring, some games don't, and <laughs> no. so uh, spur- spurvy <laughs> caching doesn't work. So uh, VKD3D Propaton has implemented a magic pipeline cache for things, so that hopefully that should work better in the future. Uh, DXR 1.1 works apparently. Uh, they added initial support for uh, interop between uh, D- uh, DXVK as well which is also pretty neat. HDR support, so you can now exist in pure darkness. Uh, and some game fixes for Guardians of the Galaxy, F1, and uh, Hitman. Hip- they finally fixed the uh, flickering with the Guardians of the Galaxy, which I'm not going to say that was uh, what's been holding me off buying. It's been the price that's been holding me off buying that. But yeah. It's good to know the fix is in place. Yeah, the, the the big thing is the uh, increase in uh, driver requirements. If you've been running Proton Experimental, you probably already know. You need Mesa 22 or the NVIDIA 510 drivers. And this effectively makes it official, which they actually bring up that um, Proton 7 will basically uh, just keep using um, 2.6 as a compatibility consideration for those people who may have an older GPU that doesn't support either Mesa 22 or NVIDIA 510. So it's it's, it's going to be a it's going to be a problem going <laughs> forward, isn't it? With yeah. like a lot of a lot of the uh, DirectX translation stuff being so driver dependent. Uh, I, I wonder. You I need wonder, to be able to run those Vulcan bits. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wonder what like the long term compatibility is going to look like. I for one am looking forward to the day where I can fucking take use make use of these things because on my fucking Polaris or not on my Polaris GP on my uh, Pascal GP. Pascal. Yeah. yeah um, <laughs> It's no DX12 is still no bueno. It's, well, I yeah. know. how much performance do you expect from your vintage gaming PC? Yeah, from my from my Retro. vintage 1080 yeah. Ti. Ah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. classic. <laughs> it's gonna be on LGR. The so it's that... gonna be like mmm mmm 1080 yeah. Ti. Oh mm. man, yeah. Oh yeah, dude. It it, it was such a miraculously over engineered card, but now now I'm just missing features. This is my only problem with it. Yeah, the oh, 1080 man. Ti effectively made all the 2000 series just. Pointless. It's like, why would you? The 1080 Ti is pretty good. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, um, we hit a big, we hit the big 3.0, not the big 3.3, the big 3.0 with Steam. Oh. 30 million concurrent users. So, this PC gaming is dead. 
Gamelister.com. Yeah, yeah, completely. Well, I mean, you get a look at that. I mean, even right now, fresh on SteamDB, uh, 20 million users, 24 hour peak, 30 million, all time peak, 30 million, 49,264. That's kind of impressive, lads. I mean, a lot of people. It, it, it's, that, that's significant. It's a bit, right? <laughs> and you're thinking about 30 million. You're like, geez, that's, that's a ginormous number. Which is like, that is quite big. And, you know, everyone says, oh, PC gaming's dead or it's dying. And, you know, it's been dead and dying for 20, 30 plus years. And uh, made me look up the numbers of Switch. I'm like, how do, how, how do we, not, not against the entire, uh, you know, console industry. Let's just, I'm sure we can do pretty good. Pretty good against a console. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, let's just take one. Let's not try to take on the whole game. How are we doing against, I don't know, the Nintendo Switch? The kids seem to like that one. Nintendo has shipped 111 million switches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's it's a, cheap. It's popular. That's before you <laughs> add in like the PS4, PS5, all the Xboxes that no one can keep track of and don't even think about looking at mobile. Yeah. What I'm saying, PC gaming. Yes. Okay. We're doing all right. And again, we're just looking at Steam. This is a fucking rounding error. I get it. But. <laughs> You can't ignore, I mean, you can't ignore 30 million on just Steam unless you're Nintendo, right? No, like, yeah. You, you got to think. I mean, we've seen Sony. Sony get done blinking. They're like, fuck, all right. And uh, Ragnarok, and they saw it with the Days <laughs> Gone to a much lesser extent, I guess. Um, I, and the PS5 I, I mean, hasn't been selling all that well because they haven't been able to produce them I th- for I think the people that want them. <laughs> that's that's the big problem, right? Is that like, yeah, they would love people to have to pay five, six hundred dollars for a PlayStation Five. They just don't have the stock to right. sell them that, right? So <laughs> here, here we are. Uh, according to this article, though, apparently people aren't too hot on the uh, new Uncharted game. I can I can guess why. Like Uncharted isn't like a crazy blockbuster series not like not like a spider-man or or a god of war or something like that um but yeah also also Some like people gonna cut you over that man. <laughs> um, a lot come, of people come, uh really come at me nolan north yeah. I mean, you know didn't didn't they make a an uncharted a movie. movie yeah they, they they did um I, I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know how well it did financially. I mean, in, in reality, like, they made a Blood Rain movie too. I think they made like three. Of them. <laughs> uh, that's Uwe Boll. <laughs> he made. He made a Dungeon Siege movie, a Postal mm-hmm. movie, Alone in the Dark. There's others, three probably. Blood Rain movies. He made three Blood Rain movies. <laughs> that's right. Michael Madsen was very drunk for two of them. It was hilarious to watch. <laughs> oh, PC man. gaming is probably not dead but i mean that that's pretty impressive i mean how many total do you think we have um like if we had to extrapolate from that so we had like 30 million people online right doing the thing yep um what do you think the actual number is like over a week is there a way to do that hmm uh, yeah, it doesn't say the amount of uh, like unique logins. Uh, Valve every now and then they say, "Oh, we have uh, I don't know, two hundred million registered active accounts," but yeah, that doesn't really mean much. Look at this! Oh, <laughs> shit. oh how far back can we go? Two thousand three—that's when it came out. <laughs> Eighty-four thousand concurrents, and when did shit pop off? Uh, when did we get our first million? First million—that's a good one, right? Yeah. Yeah. First yeah. million right there. Okay, <laughs> it's that big jump. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah. there, man. Two, so, 2008. 2008. What the that, fuck happened uh, in 2008? Or Orange Box. Uh, uh, wasn't that was 2007? It? Or yeah, 2007, 2006 ish. Was yeah. it like holidays? Uh, probably Dota or CSGO. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I know I know Orange Box definitely moved some units because that was like yeah. it, it back back in the day that was a really good deal. You got like five ass games, games for the price. Of, yeah, like yeah, uh, Audio Portal Surf, two, Portal, um, well, Portal One, yeah, Half Life two, two, Episode Two, yeah, or Episode One, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you got both. Yeah, <laughs> what, one, 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 one and two, Portal, Team Fortress, uh, and yeah, and uh, Audio Surf, yeah, <laughs> Audio Surf. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. the one that you dodged the uh, music box. Oh, that's like yeah, the yeah, one you, weird and, one that we never yeah, got you, on Linux, and you, right? And you, you, yeah, and you could uh, load your own tracks into it. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it, it runs fine in Wine. It, okay. It, yeah. Yeah. But. So, uh, yeah, uh, PC gaming's dead. 
<laughs> all right, let, let, let's talk about some salty updates. Pedro, you you have yes. uh, sodium. You have sodium for us, right? Sodiums. Yeah, apparently I have a little too much salt for this one. Uh, no, I very much like uh, Salt and Sanctuary. It's one of the five games that I got all of the achievements in, and I went out of my way to play as much as I could of it. Uh, but there's a new version out. We talked about the beta a while back. Now it's officially out. And, um, you know, the, the new game, Salt and Sacrifice, is still an epic exclusive for the time being. So, there you go. Uh, cloud saves, but only for Windows? Fucking Why? Seriously? <laughs> uh, the uh, saves that you do have are no longer backwards compatible, but since you didn't have cloud saves up to this point, you probably don't have any saves left. That's fine. Uh, the um, There's a bunch of items you mean that you this were... fucking game doesn't have cloud saves yet? Y- yeah, no, it didn't up until right now. No. <laughs> Fuck, were they too Four busy windows. rolling around in money? <laughs> Charlie murder money. Probably, yeah, Charlie murder vampire... Um... Vampire smile... <laughs> The dishwasher. Vampire smile, yes. <laughs> I could only think of Vampire Survivors, but that's a different thing. Uh, they <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, there's some items that just straight up didn't work or only partially worked as they were intended. Now those have been fixed. Uh, some of the speedrunning strats, uh, some input glitches that were enabling some speedrunning strats have actually been uh, completely nuked. So I look forward to the next... Um, well, <laughs> the next big uh, speedrunning strat that's going to make Salt and Sanctuary over even quickly, quicker. So, uh, more more look, dodge rolls. Dodge roll <laughs> yeah. things, baby. Man, I, I I don't know. I've been noticing this, like just to, just to dip back to wizards and shit for a minute. Uh-huh. Have you noticed that more fight scenes now are including Dark Souls rolls? I've bit, noticed yeah. that. Every, every, everyone, everyone's doing the dodge rolls. They need those iframes, man. It yeah. wasn't like Lord of the Rings. Well, it wasn't I mean, fucking you, like you got to think uh, the, the yeah. uh, cinematic pioneer of uh, John Wick. That's oh yeah, a, popularized yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually doing rolls in movies. Like, yeah. why don't you try that in real life? I'll step on you. Go for it. <laughs> oh, no, no, you you can't hurt me. I have iframes. I'm dumb dodging. It's, oh, it's yeah. fine. Wait, uh, right. John Wick, um, uh, House of the Dragon. So, um, Theon Greyjoy killed my dog. <laughs> it made sense in his head. Just let him have so, it. So, something yeah, like that. Coming up next, installing Arc <laughs> on Ubuntu is really, 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 easy. really easy. So easy. The big news this week is that I have a new is processor. This cursor's been here the entire time. It's really- <laughs> I noticed the cursor earlier, and uh, I didn't say anything because it was bound to annoy someone. But no, the big news very much was uh, Jordan is now a year older. So if you haven't uh, given him your... Um, uh, oh, thank you, Foxy. Or thank you, uh, Alex, for <laughs> gifting Foxy the, <laughs> the sub. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's that part I, of the show want, where we need to... Uh, yeah, it's that part of the show where we need to thank all of you good for sub being genuinely, and... truly uh, generous people. Uh, <laughs> Canada, like, like outside of like, no, like, what? do you got like a the Tim Hortons of sub shops? I Canada? mean, Tim Tim Hortons does sell subs. Okay, uh, so, uh, but they they got they got like Subway and Mister Sub and Belly Buster. Mister Sub, Mister Sub, that's the Canadian. That's the Canadian one. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Can you get poutine on sub? I don't see why not. Well, I mean, oh, uh, just a baguette with some poutine <laughs> in the middle. I, I need that. I need that. <laughs> Man, well, if you want to buy us a Bitch, poutine I sandwich, head on, deal with it. <laughs> head on over to patreoncom slash Cast. No, it's Linux Game Cast. Subscribe. You get a bunch of cool stuff by subbing to our Twitch, like access to our Discord, which you can also or or Patreon that, which you can uh, get access to our uh, Discord. It's up to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Fuck me, I spelled poutine correctly. Yeah, good job. <laughs> um, amazing. Uh, you can uh, RSVP to game streams uh, on Thursdays. I'm doing Borderlands 3 now. Uh, so if you want, if you got a copy of the game, it was on free on the Epic Game Store. Strider actually confirmed that the uh, cross-play is working. So if you have the Epic game, ep- the Epic Games version, you can play with me on the Steam version. Um <laughs> Pedro, uh, Ven is doing Trackmania on Tuesdays and Fridays, so if you want to RSVP, you can get in Discord and join and drive around trying to find an end goal, because there is that is the goal. So you guys uh, are going to be doing Borderlands 3. What are the rules? Uh, what are the uh, terms and stipulations? You get to ter- a certain ter- level? 
Term, terms and stipulations, yeah. Uh, try and keep it around uh, our level. If you have, like, a pre-made character, uh, maybe hold off on using them until we get to uh, that level. Right now, we're at level six. So if you want to jump in anything, like, one to level one to six, you should be good. Um, the game does uh, scaling, so, like, you'll level up and match us pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, uh, our, uh, if you want to RSVP, uh, at me, uh, at Frojo on our Discord, uh, before we go go live at 7.30 Thursdays. And, yeah, you can play along with some uh, What's the max amount of players? Four. Four. So you... Three slots. Three slots. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we got we got some people we got to thank as well. Uh, I mentioned that earlier. I got to thank Jill, Foxy, and Anani Mouse for some birthday gifts from me. I got to thank Eddie Hyde. 2k for uh, subbing to us on uh, twitch via their twitch prime sub Thank we you, know hey. you only have one of those a month so hey man why did you get you, those you wasted it on us yeah, yeah bezos bucks bezos bucks <laughs> ah, we got we got a we got a store as well store.linuxgamecast.com go buy yourself some lgc merch uh drink some mayonnaise out of that cup someone someone needs to like send us a photo of like the hell elks mug just filled with just mayonnaise i need somebody to point me where you they don't make travel size mayo. I learned this because I need they, I need to think of mayo as a prop for video. <laughs> they, they they do. The they fuck do. They, 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 in yeah, Tesco's like, here, they have the yeah, teeny like, tiny ones. Yeah, <laughs> and they, they, they even have like the little like uh, ketchup packets, like the mayo packets. Mayo packets. Oh yeah, like the the fast food place packets. Yeah. 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 See, the, okay, there's the equation. I, I don't typically go to fast food places. Uh, all right, all right. That mayo packets actually, I think, for comedic effect, will work better. This, okay. this will probably make no sense at all until it shows up in a video. So <laughs> I, I look forward to this. If you, if, if you want to fund our Mayo acquisitions, yeah, patreon.com slash Hey, check it out. <laughs> Birthday Boys also got a wish zone uh, along do. with Pedro and myself. Let's see. Take a look. Uh, it's still, he's got bells of steel. <laughs> he got chairs. You can get a uh, Jordan, one of those fancy 59 50X16 cores. You can have all the cores, green bars, and all that stuff. Do I have everybody's up? Uh, Pedro's got uh, crucial hard drives, yes. blanky keyboards. Hot guns, files, <laughs> scooters, more keyboards. There's no processor there anymore. <laughs> the processor is gone. <laughs> Yay. A fed head for reasons. And uh, Germanium. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do it? I forgot that that was there. <laughs> <laughs> I cleaned mine out. I got one for the studio. If you want it up on this wall, uh, you can find all that at LinuxTeamCast.com. But yeah, like and subscribe, all that fun stuff. If you're a patron, Twitch sub, hop in our Discord. We're there the other six days of the week, melting your goddamn face off with our wacky brand of comedy because we actually have an active Discord. I know. Oh, look, ass, but don't worry about it. If you're tuning in live, all that's tied together, man. You can hop in our live chat and Discord, IRC, or Twitch, and we can communicate with each other. We can give each other virtual hugs. Just as hot as it sounds. Yeah. We got anything else? No, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. We got we got to talk about those hot new Intel GPUs on Linux, though. No, we don't. Oh, yes. They did release some drivers last week, didn't they? <laughs> didn't they? Didn't they? <laughs> didn't they? Intel Arc dedicated GPUs, Linux kernel 6 point in the latest Mesa. With a little work, full 3D acceleration, hardware decoding and encoding, fully functional, so this comes from bias level. Uh, dude went through all this. You know, it starts off with like a resizable bar getting this because he was curious. He was curious. He's like, how does this work? And he went through it, downloaded them. They just ate shit. Everything imploded. The official PPA, none of that shit worked. And he's like, all right, now I would like to know exactly what failed. Not enough to buy an Intel Arc right now, but kernel 6.0 latest firmware, latest Mesa, compiling the Intel media drivers and some added i386 bits for your Steam. Boom, you're up and running, man. Uh, unfortunately, at this point, with the lack of availability for the 770-16 gig, it was like waning interest to the past. Like if I stumble across one, I went on Wednesday when um, I think it might have been before the show and Jill and I were talking around. I went to eBay because like for sure right now, since they've been out of stock on UEG for well over a week, coming up on two weeks, scalpers, somebody's going to try to turn a profit. They're not even on eBay yet, which... Red yarn conspiracy theory. They made <laughs> there six weren't of many. Them. No, yeah. <laughs> they were truly limited editions. I do, I do, I do like in this article. He's like, if you're gonna try this at home, I suggest leaving any integrated graphics enabled, as well as make sure that you have a running SSH server in the event that you have a blank screen, which. You know, it's just good advice in general. Uh, but yeah, like Ben mentioned, uh, you can't do this out of the box right away. You're going to need kernel 6 to auto. Uh, that's not in the latest Ubuntu just yet. Um, yeah, the uh, the Intel media drivers as well are going to be required if you want the hardware AV1 encode, decode. 
Um, but yeah, uh, after you get all that done, you can launch Borderlands 2, and it runs, apparently. The guy didn't put any, uh, like, uh, frame rates or anything, but that was apparently his test to make sure yeah, that it was working, uh, and it is. I mentioned last week about getting QuickSync to work takes a bit of work. Yeah, he went through about half of the work that you need to get QuickSync running. <laughs> that That's, uh, that's impressive. Very good. Um, <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, Quick sync, uh, uh, being you well, know, know proprietary. What, quick is. What, do you, what do you mean by saying he did half the work? Because uh, the one of the things that you need for quick sync is the uh, Intel media drivers, uh-huh. and then you need to download the Intel media server, and you need to compile that, and then you need to compile FFmpeg with quick sync enabled. So you're saying his instructions <laughs> wouldn't work? I'm saying his instructions get about halfway there, uh, but they work for the ARC for the the AV1 encoding because if you're using um, OBS, that already comes with um, AV1. The so you're saying version. those instructions would halfway work on a different <laughs> for a different product? Yes. <laughs> I just That's thought the confusion. Okay, that, got it. That, uh, yeah. the, the serendipity that I saw in that was the whole. I mentioned uh, QuickSync specifically last week, and it's like, oh, that's. The half of the process right there. All right. <laughs> so the moral of the story, even with this particular one version of um, Ubuntu, with this very particular kernel, it fails. I still don't know where it fails, though. And that's been bugging me since Wednesday. Uh, like, update this. This is also this is one of the reasons I kind of want one just to fuck around with, just to see. Because, mm. yeah, I mean, I want to know these things. And uh, you're not going to run out and buy them. Th- Based on the based on the failure though, I think so. I think it was just like the particular version, the kernel Mesa combination that they have in uh, twenty two ten do- doesn't play nice. But you can get the you can get what you need in twenty two oh four on like an already running system. Basically. Maybe now yeah. I do want to point this out. Without being able to install the official binary blobs, that goodness, you're not going to get access to compute mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. his method. So if you're thinking like, okay, I'm going to get this up and running and I'm going to be firing up Blender or you're going to be firing up DaVinci Resolve, LOL, JK, no. Does does uh, Blender have support for the Intel stuff yet? or uh... Mayhaps? Question mark, shrug emoji? That, yeah, that, I don't, I, I can't I, even I say that's, allegedly. That, that's, that's, that's the other question, right? Like, cause we know, we know the drivers are out, but like, where's the actual like software support where, where's people come out? Whereas like OBS, well, I guess OBS has come out and said it already, but like Blender. Uh, yeah. Uh, the AV1 and encode decode should work without any special binary bits. And Fox dog says Blender does. Yes. But then Fox dog also just says shit. So, <laughs> so, you know, Although, uh, so, when it comes to some Blender, I believe Foxy. Because he uses Blender a lot. <laughs> Sometimes, but like if it's pro Blender, he's like, yeah, sure, yeah, uh-huh. go get it. <laughs> yeah, the bias is there. Yeah. <laughs> listen, 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 the important thing is that we have a hate mail form. You can exactly. send us the hate mail with the yes. primary source. <laughs> primary source, please. Once you're done decompiling Deus Ex Human Revolution. No, we gotta talk. We gotta talk about man. You're you're you're, you're a little off this week. We gotta yes. talk. We gotta talk about uh, PlayStation controllers. There's a new one out. Yeah. Uh, the dual edge, uh, as you may have seen, uh, the big fancy uh, PlayStation 2 controller, the one that costs two hundred dollars. Yeah, that one. You know, my defense, uh, they oh. both started with a D. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I was looking at that too. I'm like, oh, there's a new DualShock. How much is it? No, 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 no. no. Uh, it, it's got the fancy, like the the big fancy. You can swap out the um, the analog sticks uh, for different ones you can use the electromagnetic one so you don't get stick drift as quickly uh but it is yeah the the like they did for the original dual sense it is absolutely um just official sony drivers being pushed directly into the kernel uh i guess they realized that at least from what i see on twitter is a lot of people playing with an external controller uh after like plugging their deck in and having it on the big screen and then using a dual sense to play on their decks. So they probably going, Oh, so if we make the new controller work, there'll be more people spending $200. I think people there just like go. pairing Bluetooth controllers <laughs> with, you know, devices in general. And, you know, most yeah. people do that. Okay. <laughs> this so was like that in the kernel. Uh, probably had a lot more to do around. with like, yeah, we wanted to work on Android. Yep. A hundred percent. Yeah, that, 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 that's, yeah, that's my first point. I mean, yeah, as uh, cool but, as that fanfic was, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, but you know, hey, uh, it brings up uh, the feature level to uh, what 
the dual sense currently has it's in the good, kernel. So yeah, like all uh, I don't think the remap stuff is going to be working, but all of the all of the haptics, all of the uh, all of the pressure sensitivity stuff that 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 all works. So um, I look forward to getting some enhanced support for this in um, in Steam uh, input. That'll be neat to be able yeah. to uh, dick around with some of those features. But I think it's a good thing to there. Where are we at? Because I think we all had a good hearty laugh at um, the. Two hundred dollar Xbox controller, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. So, so he's like, one. "Oh, yeah. we, 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 we want, we want a piece of that." Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I, I, still, I still got my, I still got my DualShock Four. This thing, this thing takes the licking and keeps on ticking, man. Like, mine's red. I mean, I have. Uh, <laughs> clearly, I too have a preference. <laughs> well, I know. But, yeah. Even when Pedro's like, "Yeah, I bought this thing for like sixty quid," I'm like, Ugh. fifty. <laughs> 50 pounds. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it doesn't fill you with any more, <laughs> doesn't fill you with any more confidence. That's all I'm saying. Um, but yeah, it's a great uh, controller. I just prefer to DualShock 4. <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would really like to try one out, but I don't want to pay. See, I would like one of these Xbox can also read, uh, that I am scared to touch this because this is a known failure point on the mm. Xbox One S, like the right, uh, no, uh, bumper. I, the, yeah, this bumper is will fail. This is. Ah. It, it can last exactly one game of Assassin's Creed. Uh, what was the Egypt one? Oh, uh, Origins. Origins. You can go to that. Then it will completely fail. I got a refund. Uh, they swapped out this one. That hasn't failed yet. So, <laughs> Xbox. I'm not giving you 200 bucks. I think Scott got one of those. I don't know. If I had a $200 Scott, Scott controller, them. if I had a $200 controller, I would want like a box and thing to put it in. Like I would be worried about it, man. I want I if I were paying two hundred bucks for a controller, it better be like a sex box controller. It has like a thing okay. that on my... <laughs> it has a hole for your things. <laughs> yeah. Here's an idea. Vibration, man. <laughs> Maybe if you have a problem like throwing your controller, a two hundred dollar controller will help. Like uh, yeah, give you yeah, pause to, yeah. like what the that'll hell? get you yeah. Get you to think before you throw yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, that that is that is a fantastic way to encourage <laughs> self harm. Well, we got a we got a brand new. Uh, well, not brand new, but this is still pretty cool. Um, direct or uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution decompiled. Uh, someone has uh, got it decompiled, uh, and so to the point where what you the can absolute recompile. Quote, quote, quote. Oh, jeez, did you get well actually done your decompile? Let's see. Uh, uh, flip a word horizontally and set correct widening order. Eh, all right. Uh, yeah, but it 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 is, it is a decompilation of the uh, of the game or game engine for uh, Deus Ex: Human Revolution. We got mm-hmm. the sequel, uh, Mankind Divided, on Linux via Feral, but the but the um, the prequel, uh, this version, did not get a native Linux release. The native Linux version of this is pretty neat because it uses DXVK native for the DirectX 11, which I you know I'm down for it. I think more. I think yeah. at this point, D- DXVK is a mature enough project uh product that like yeah if we we just want we don't i don't want to learn vulcan i don't want to learn OpenGL, whatever yeah you use the xvk native it, it works great it performs fantastic uh so go ahead the one problem with the native linux version for this guy is that mouse look is busted don't know why uh you're gonna need the uh you're gonna need uh the original game files as well you just need to give the uh recompiled version uh the path to those game files via environment variable and then away you go uh, i did I, yeah. I gave this a build it compiles but i couldn't get dsx human <laughs> revolution downloaded in time to actually see what would work but yeah it's still pretty neat the thing that kind of caught my eye was uh he's actually using cmake right because CMake, yes. if you're just building the uh, 32-bit uh, binary on Linux, will automatically download and build the sources for the dependencies. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, get get some module. If you if you want to build the Windows version, though, you're going to need to install some Rust stuff. You need a tool called yeah. XWin. You know what? I mean, you know it's CMake because I scroll down to because you assume there's build instructions for Windows, and always like looking at those going. You poor things, yeah. but it's like that. No, CMake throws this thing in VS Code, and it'll take care of it for you. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All and you can to... ask for help, and like, well, you didn't check the boxes. What boxes? CMake's got to do it. Yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> I never played this game. Did either of you? Uh yes. I, I had played the first three missions, and I got a little bit bored. <laughs> like even yeah. back in the day, I, like I never. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
Yeah, I, 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 I also, I also bounced off it similarly. I think I got a little bit further in uh, Mankind Divided, but also that was because we had to play it for the show, and I'm like, all right, well, I got to actually put an effort. And Mankind this. Divided was a bit more open. Uh, Human Revolution was very much, oh, it's completely linear, but you have like three paths you can take for every yeah, you, one of the set pieces. Yeah, you, you can, you can do the self path, you can do the melee path, and you can do the hacking path, and that's yeah. You know, I never got very far in the uh, feral version. I, maybe I need to go revisit that with some proton because that thing just ran like. Shit. It did. Yeah. yeah. That was a bit poop. I mean, it didn't look <laughs> I, I, great I think, I think that's like, that, that, is, that is the thing. We probably should, maybe that maybe that would be a fun, like, thing for December is, like, go back and do, like, fer, fer, the Feral versus versus Proton. Who did do, it better? Oh, yeah. Just do victory laps on their fucking grave. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that would be the proverbial beating of that horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is kind of neat what we got up next. Um, X86 simulation. And I, I want to game this, but you know, in my defense, they put up a gaming video showing off like how well this thing does emulation. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the Odroid H3 Plus, $165. Doesn't sound like a lot anymore, doesn't? Especially when Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gig, what's it going to run you? Starting at $200 if you can find one. Dude. 100 and something pounds, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is available. This is something you can buy. It doesn't stop there. Look at this. Look at this. This is a quad core Jasper Lake in 6005. Base clock, two gigs, up to 3.3. It takes SO DIMMs. 30, what is it? 23400 um, PC20. 20, yeah, 2933 mega transfers. So up to 64 gigs of that. It's got NVMe holes. It's got PCI Express by four for your NVMe. Dual 2.5 gig Ethernet, uh, two SATA ports. Look at this little bastard. And it fits in a little tiny box. And it does. Under 200 bucks, HDMI and display port out. Even if you tag in the extra, you know, like an eight gig stick, what's that going to run, Pedro? Like 20 bucks? Yeah, uh, not, not much. Yeah, 20 bucks for two. <laughs> uh, it's uh, SO DIMMs, especially like the DDR4 ones, are very, very cheap right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> Nintendo going to sue somebody. Let's bring it. Uh, <laughs> and it's fanless. If you want it to be, but like, well, the Raspberry Pi for it's probably not a good idea. Look at they're showing this bad boy off. Can it run? Uh, yeah, plays Mario's and stuff like this. And again, this is x86, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's a an Intel Jasper Lake uh, CPU it, on it. It's, yeah. it, it's, ba- it's basically, <laughs> I mean, it's basically a Celeron, but you know, at that price point, right? Who the fuck cares? Dude. For the form factor, you can turn that into yeah. like a handheld. A very, very cheap, very powerful handheld. <laughs> yeah, just like uh, just like GPD One. Yeah, except those are uh, you know a thousand bucks. <laughs> oh yeah, you got, you got to mark up the price, right? Like you got, you got yeah. to make money somehow. We could even play the latest God of War. And oh yeah, on the PS3. Yes, <laughs> <sighs> the fact that this thing can do PS3 or the Dragon Balls. Look at that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what is this? Uh, PCSX2. Yeah, PS. Oh, yeah. PS2, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, PCSX2. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, I'm excited about this. I'm probably just going to buy one to play around with because I've wanted to live this. Uh, I've been waiting for an ARM thing, but we talked about this in the pre-show. Go back and listen if you're a patron. The availability of the Raspberry Pi 4, like this doesn't make any sense. Um, this wouldn't have made sense like two, three years ago when you could buy a Raspberry Pi for 8 gig for 75 bucks, like I did. And I paid like $100 because they were a little difficult to get the 8 gig versions back then, but for 100 bucks you could get an entire kit with a case and power I, supply I, and all that. I remember talking to Eben like a decade ago, uh-huh. and he's like, yeah, I hope I hope this Raspberry Pi thing is going to be like very successful. I hope it really takes off and people mm-hmm. re- really get what I'm, go- what I'm trying to go for. I'm like, wow, t- some amount of time later, it's like, jeez. <laughs> Now they I got think, what I think you were going for, and then yeah. some. <laughs> yeah, it was a little, a little too successful. Now, what is the going price for a Raspberry Pi for uh, eight gig? Mm. Yeah, uh, I looked a couple of days ago, and it was one hundred and thirty pounds. Uh, Canada well, starting at two hundred and fourteen dollars um, for just the board itself on Amazon. <laughs> oh, sorry, one hundred and eighty nine pounds. <laughs> Uh huh. Two seventy nine for a basic kit. Uh, One ninety seven for the board itself. Uh, Two twenty nine for the board itself. So this is two seventy one not... Canadian. What the okay. fuck? Okay. Now all yeah. of a sudden, when I'm like, "Hey, do you want an X eighty six board that's uh, roughly the same form factor, way more powerful, with more shit yeah. on it?" Um, for yeah, cheaper? Yeah. 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 Plus, you're gonna have to well, add your own RAM, but still cheaper. <laughs> and you know like, what? You, you, you can even throw question. on like a ten dollar premium case. 
Yeah. <laughs> How long do you think that's going to last, though? You think like everyone's just going to be like, oh, but this thing now. Blah. I don't know. Um, again, I'm probably just going to have to order one uh, probably next month. And Yeah, if yeah. you're looking at this right now and they're still in stock, buy one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, b- b- make the purchase now, because th- <laughs> by, by the time you make up your mind, it's not going to be available. Well, uh, you know, buy one if you plan on doing something with it. I mean, try to be responsible. Yes, uh, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> responsible, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, for yourself, I mean, responsibility, you know, fiscally, of like, hey, don't end up with another <laughs> stack of uh, fog machines, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all, all two dozen of them. You got eleven more? No, twenty. Yeah, I have a pro- I have a problem. That hmm. I'm a, I'm addicted to fog. Addicted to the smoke <laughs> machines. <laughs> I, I still I, I, say I, if you put it I in the fuck mothering. F- oh, you cleaned up the fireplace. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No more good. danger squirrel. <laughs> no, no more danger squirrel. Yeah. So if we get the fog machine in the fireplace and we hook it up to the internet. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and just create a, a Twitch bot that people can send a command. <laughs> no, we, I, we, so, we set it up so for like twenty five Canadian goes to Jordan's PayPal account, and it you can smoke him out of his own room. <laughs> no, so my, my my plan was to hook it up to the back of this chair and then have like a fart button, so every time I fart, I can like <laughs> shoot steam out of my ass. Yeah, that's uh. <sighs> Maybe I can make a roguelike about it. So you want to build a roguelike? Yeah, let's. I was, I was literally going to do that. Um, yeah, GameDeveloper.com has a fun little blog post here on how to build a roguelike. You know, a game with procedurally generated levels, permadeath, oh. and um, often, oftentimes ASCII art. Uh, and this is from Josh Josh G G. I don't I don't know how it's pronounced. I'm sorry G? for butchering your name. Uh, he has he has uh, he has the uh, talk version of this uh, on YouTube as well. But it's a pretty insightful uh, insightful breakdown of how to go about building a roguelike, like what the various subsystems at play are, making sure you have like a core mechanic, and even like some advice on ASCII art and how to um, and how to best take advantage of your limited resources if say you're building a seven day roguelike, uh, which is the which is the general advice that this article is built for um but yeah i also also learned about xrls which is basically an entire genre of roguelike where fans are making their own based on of existing franchises and going going crazy which is neat it's like it's like game design fan fiction who, who would have remember doom the roguelike <laughs> yeah okay uh oh god damn turbo pascal i haven't heard that in a minute um you, you, you can use awk to make a roguelike i mean probably i don't know why you would but D- yeah <laughs> you're basically pushing characters uh ascii characters uh in a terminal, so yeah, you could probably easily uh, replace Where the all of that. Flutter. <laughs> uh, Flutter. I've heard of that. I don't. I don't know. There's and there's a million yes, of these. I've like heard that the name. It is, yeah, trust me. You're, you're as yeah. far as a uh, starting point type of article, that is described as a comprehensive primer, and I'd have to agree because there's a very, very long article for something that you'd consider a starting point, and. It's really well written and it's very detailed and there's like pictures, examples, stuff that you can look at, which I also enjoy. And uh, as much as I like roguelikes, it's definitely one of the genres that I'm the worst at. So I need people to make more so that I can play more games and get more. Pedro, practice, you need to tune into roguelike radio a podcast. About <laughs> I did see the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, hey, that's that's the, that's the beauty of podcasting is that you yeah. can have the, like who 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 listens to Every niche podcasts has their about podcast. Linux gaming, hey, right? Man. Yeah, no, from our ivory tower of Linux gaming. Um, yeah, ab- absolutely. Oh, Rogue Linux podcast, by default. winning for by sure. default. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty good, and ho- hopefully someone takes a look at this. Like I, I def- while reading through them, was like, yeah, I could I could make a roguelike, and that's how I lost all of my free time. So maybe 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 you will follow through with that threat. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like script man. This thing goes on forever, but yeah, it's good to have things like this. Is basically as like collision avoidance outlines of like here's some traps you can fucking fall in. And yeah, 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 and just, just bre- breaking down like what are the problems are. It's like, oh, you you don't just want to go for like the map creation. You need to like understand what you're trying to accomplish first. And here, are, and it actually lays out a pretty decent order of operations as well, from like a starting point, from like having nothing. And I think it does a good job something. of um, helping you sort out whether or not you're the idea guy. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. You, you read something like this, you might realize that you're the idea guy. And yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, speak, speaking of open-ended games with many possible solutions, coming up next, a game that has none of those things. Ooh. And we're back with the Chair Acquisition, where we take a game, run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions with some fairly different hardware, and then we give you a highly scientific labyrinthine score based on lawn chairs. One labyrinthine lawn chair means that it's leaky poo poo and uh four chairs means that it's pretty fucking great this week we are taking a look at dr kobushi's labyrinthine laboratory built by symbolic software done on the ebit engine engine you can pick it up for about 10 bucks what is it a mind-bendingly challenging puzzle game that mixes as homages to retro classics with funny dialogue and innovative puzzle mechanics over a hundred ultra challenging pixelated puzzles will have you avoiding killer robots as you engage with memorable characters. We got to thank Symbolic Software for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. I guess let's let's get into it. How's how's it running on Debian land, then? Oh man, Debian testing land with a 1920x and a 3060. You might imagine that the pixel perfection was able to perform properly. Ah, so yeah. It launches out of the box. I hope you like full screen because that's pretty much the, uh, well, you don't even have that option. You got to hit alt enter if you want to get windowed mode because there's no, none, none. It starts. It's like, hey, you're in the game now. Deal with it. X clone controller did work out of the box. Sane mappings. Happy to see that. And I mean, it looks all right for a pixel game. I don't really have any complaints. Um, you know, if you take the art style, it's not lazily done at all. It's got a beep boop soundtrack on top of that. And you know what? I want to give it a free round of applause because it's nice to see a hipster pixel game clock in at under 50 megabytes you know we're thinking about unity titles you're like oh look that's a very basic little game 2.1 gigs I'm like what <laughs> more common than you might think now let's talk about the fun though because i only made it to level seven on this pager's already beat me here if you're watching the video version and i, I tapped out you know i it, it, this is slamming meat ai against pixels until desired result has been achieved it's like you know, I think about it like an Artifacts Monday game, like a hidden puzzle game, because at some point you can just say, fuck it, brute force your way through it. And the way to prevent that is like, there's just like, offer me hints, be it visual clues or like red herring, send me off on a path, engage me a little bit, something to keep me thinking about the puzzle, not the underlying mechanics itself. I like, you know, like getting halfway through a puzzle only to get hit when, you know, in that face like, ah, I gotcha, gotcha. You thought, I thought about that too. And now go back to square one, because that gets me in the mood. That gets that adversarial relationship like oh oh it's on now never had it with us i didn't it didn't get me that little wee little bit of angry i never got that oh it's game on let's dance it was like i, I was plowing through it and there's only one way to solve each puzzle so it's puzzle by numbers and you know what the puzzles are complex they are well done 100 percent. and i just gotta say man like this is i lack a better word for this but um Dr. Kabushi, is it Kabushi? Yes, Kabushi. Ko Kabushi. Kabushi's <laughs> Labyrinth Kabushi -san. Laboratory. It just lacks a soul. It's just too mechanical. I don't, it's like I'm just kind of like doing work, man. And by level seven, I just really did. Um, so I'm just going to say, you know what, technically fun functions. It's good to see a native Linux puzzle game. And traditionally, we like fuck you hard puzzles, which this delivered. It's fuck you hard. But it didn't hit me in the point of like, I'm going to come back to this to prove a point. Like you proved your point. You made some hard ass puzzles, but uh, yeah, there you go. Two cheers. Okay. Uh, so on Fedora 35, 64 bit, I'm running a weird old Franken Fedorf now with uh, kernel 6.0. So take this with a big old grain of salt, but uh, launch this out of the box on the monitor that Steam is open on. There is no exit button here. No options either. Uh, if you want to get out of the game, you got Alt F4 to pay respects. Uh, controls work out of the box, but your controls are move and reset. Uh, there is a pretty retro soundtrack loop, and the sprites are competently done. You have like, half the screen is taken up by like a TV screen where you have this other character who's like shouting stuff at you, and that one changes over time. But I didn't like Anton. I got sick of looking at his weird little puppet face. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe vary it up, especially, especially cause like he doesn't really, he says the same things over and over again. Um, fun was, yeah, these are some positioning puzzles. All right. And I guess like, like then I'm a little too stupid to figure them out. I got about halfway through level seven and I'm like, and then I, 
I, I realized what this game does not have that something like Steven Sauce's role has. It doesn't have a carrot. There is definitely a lot of stick. If you fuck up, uh, you have to start from the beginning and um, you, you got to dodge all the little robot guys. By the way, fuck these red dudes who can move like twice as fast as you can. That's some mm. that's some fucking poo poo shit. Like maybe maybe introduce those guys later after you better in, introduce people to like the, the duck and cover mechanic because fighting these guys right off the bat is like not not fun. But so lot lots lots of stick. But there's no carrot. There's no like hey just you know cook some hot dogs fucker or hey here. We're, we're, we're going to provide you with some cool ways that you can interact with the level so that it, it, it encourages you to experiment and play around. No, there is the one solution. You can brute force your way through it, but that's not particularly fun. It's just like, okay, well, I've exhausted all of the potential options from walking in this direction. Let's go to the other direction. Uh, and while you could probably math that out because like each character has their own little Pac-Man style um AI to them, like the, the, the robot dudes, they will always prefer to move uh, horizontally rather than vertically. And you can take advantage of the AI, but like without creating some like fun ways to play with that and like really ingrain this in, it just becomes like it, you're, 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 you're left with too much rope to hang yourself. And it's kind of not fun playing with just dangly rope. You want to have, you want to have a fun little noose to stick around your neck. I don't know where I'm going with this analogy <laughs> to put. The point is that the puzzles, I don't know. I didn't have a lot of fun with it. It like Ben said, it's technically competent. I'm going to give it two chairs. I think, I think it could be something fun, but it needs, it needs more. Yeah. And over here on the, um, now Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, um, it launched out of the box with the RX 6700X T, and on the Steam Deck, it also ran out of the box. It correctly v-syncs to whatever your display can do, 144 here, or 40 or 6, or all the way up to 60 on the uh, Steam Deck. The DualShock 4 and the DualSense, they both worked with and without Steam input, so... That's that's very good. Uh, it's very pixely, very chip Uh They seem to have nailed down the uh, retro aesthetic that they were going for. And honestly, in a technical sense, I have no complaints. Yes, there are no options menu. There is no quit button. Uh, <laughs> 2022, there's no quit button. But, you know, Alt F4 works. Or if you're playing it in a window, you can just click the little cross in the corner and away you go. As for the fun, I, I don't know. I don't think it's fun. It's hard. Well... Even then, it's not entirely hard. It's just that the moment the tutorial uh, training wheels come off, you have exactly one right way to do things, and this is the level that is on the video version. That's the last level of the tutorial, and that's where the training wheels uh, come off. Uh, if you deviate in the first 20 to 50 moves at all from the ideal path, that's it. You're done. You're dead. Just restart the level because you're not going to get anything else. And it's... It, you'll eventually figure it out. If you try to brute force it, you will absolutely eventually figure it out. But you can only move in the four directions, except for later on in uh, chapter two or three that it introduces the uh, mirrors that you can teleport in. So it, it probably won't take too long, but... Yeah. As for the game itself, imagine if someone had made a turn-based game around the entirety of how the Pac-Man ghost movement logic works. You know, how all the Pac-Man ghosts have different uh, logic as to how they track Pac-Man? Well, here the enemies very much play that same game. Uh, those robots will move twice, first horizontally and then vertically, always to uh, squares per turn. So once you take the time to learn how the enemies do things, you will very quickly learn how to progress. And I just didn't like the game enough to get to that point, I guess. So yeah, I like it when a puzzle game gives me multiple solutions to a problem. And this, this is the exact opposite. There is no wiggle room. So it gets two chairs. Would, would you say that this kind of has, like, the opposite problem that that Lego game we had, we played last week, where, like, there are so many solutions to all, all of those puzzles where it, you get a little bit of options paralysis. Here, there's only the one. And, yeah. I, and I think, like, <sighs> b both extremes are not great. No, I mean, yeah, I'm going to say this is not. the exact same issue <laughs> as last week is there's only, with the Lego game, is there's only one way the Lego game was going to let you complete a puzzle. There, no, there, there, there were a couple of different no, there, solutions. There were multiple. For, yeah, yeah. The, you could very much get as creative as you wanted and still have something that was perfectly functional, or you could go as bare bones as you wanted to 
and still pass the minimum requirement. To come back to my point is I'm talking about with like the clicky mechanics. Like, no, you had to have this anchored or this is going to do it. And there's, there's nothing like, oh, I want to just prop these blocks here. Well, you better make sure that locks yeah, into these blocks because it's going to be red. Like, it would yeah. be, you do have to have rules. Yeah, uh, yeah that's that what I talked constrain. about last week. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. put <laughs> rules on this. And like, this one is like super strict to the point of it's uh, smash it, it head against wall by numbers. Yeah. Yes. You, yeah. You, 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 you need some carrot. Like, I, li- I like the idea of like, oh, you need to use your pos- positioning in the AI to like get the, the robots to do bad stuff. But give me more stuff to do with that, right? Like, there's only. Like each, each trap is ba- on each level is basically for one monster and one monster only. But like giving mm-hmm. people the ability to experiment would, I think, encourage people to approach the game in the way that it, people that the designer wants it to, versus mm-hmm. like just brute forcing it, which is what you end up doing because it's like, oh, the cost for failure is so high, and the cost for experimenting, or and like there's no there's not a good opportunity to experiment, right? Like, and maybe some more runway, you yeah, know, to play around with these mechanics because i i mean i'm still not gonna say even because i'm only like seven maps in you know in like 50 minutes 57 minutes to play i'm not a hundred percent on how the wall hiding works yet man yeah it's 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 a little unclear um yeah it's how the the, the robots move because first they move horizontally unless they can't and you're directly above them at which point they will move vertically it's basically figuring out the the priorities of how they move when you move. Right. But, 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 but I think what Ben's saying is like through the gameplay, there is a better way to convey this in a way that you can learn and improve. And therefore you're not slamming into this wall. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And uh, yeah, I, I think that, that, that is kind of the, 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 the main downfall of, uh, what, what, what the fuck is this game called? Doctor Kobushi's <laughs> Labyrinthine Labyrinth. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe a shorter, more digestible name next time as well. Coming up next, we know people are hating on flat packs, snaps, app images, flat snacks, but, flat flat snacks. But you know what? Maybe, maybe you should just avoid using package managers in general. Oh. If you too have encountered the dangers of. Uh, Grease uh, and Teflon and um, lithium grease and other kinds of uh, slick making substances. You too should go to LinuxCameCast.com, hit the contact button, and uh, fill out the form. Let us know how that went. And, uh, you know, you don't need to mention brands, just mention what kind of uh, oily thing you were rubbing all over yourself. I I need to know more about this uh, Teflon oil that I can buy. (laughs) I mean, it, it, it's all uh, crude byproduct, right? So, eh. <laughs> I can you buy Teflon grease? I, I think so. Tef- Teflon I'd coating pr- it would require looking it up. Let's see. <laughs> How about Teflon paint? Teflon grease. Yes, you can. Oh, Teflon nice. grease versus uh, lithium grease. There you go. <laughs> versus. <laughs> Which, which tastes yeah, better? There's a comparison. The, cha- the challenge, you know, you know, if, if if you're if you're gonna spoon it in your mouth, which should you do, Teflon grease or lithium grease? Find out. Um, oh, there's a three way one. Okay. But Teflon grease, lithium grease, and silicon grease. <laughs> that sounds oh, yeah. delightfully naughty. <laughs> we love to hear from you. Leave us a comment on YouTube. Leave us a comment on Patreon, or you can do as Pedro instructed and use the contact form. I know it's crazy stuff, like. Ryan did, and you know what, Ryan, you got to give Ryan credit because he's like, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the Pepsi challenge onto this, and he went hard. Yeah, <laughs> man, he's 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 going he's going for the word count. Uh, so he said, yeah, sent for humor, drenched in sarcasm, love the show, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I finally accepted your challenge to send a steaming pile of sh- start, start to your in <laughs> start to your inbox and light it on fire with a burning flame, exploding with old school internet vitriol. Ven has proudly stated multiple times that pipe wires for people who can't figure out how to use Jack. Well, sir, I was oh, greatly shit. disappointed when I saw you using package managers <laughs> with flagrant disregard for the impact of your machines. 
Package managers are for people who can't figure it out. How do you use Make? Why do you insist on using Debian with its watered-down app get when you could have produce smaller and faster binaries use building BSD from source by hand with Make World? Have you no shame? Does your performance mean nothing to you at all, sir? I suppose you're kind of man that uses a hammer to pound on things. Well, sir, hammers are a bloated misuse of resource that prevent you from participating in the visceral experience of beating the ever-loving start out of something with your bare f- starking hands and a good old-fashioned rock. If you spent the time to learn how to use rocks properly, you would see their natural advantages. Jack is for people who can't figure out how to use rocks to create sound from their Linux machines by beating the hell out of them with shark jacket boulders with some solid full-on over-the-head swings. With that, I bid you good day, sir. I said good day, sir. You know, you could probably have learned to use Jack in the amount of time you spent writing that. I'm just Possibly. Saying. But Possibly. you'd have to install it with a package manager, though, and not rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Which is clearly against Ryan's uh, ethos there. But so I build Jack that. from source. <laughs> did you use rocks to do it? Always. <laughs> did, did you build a pile of rocks and named it Jack? I don't know why this guy's got such a hang up with Rocky OS, but I mean, <laughs> but, listen, he really likes streams. <laughs> Swinging it over his head. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What, what, what are your thoughts on? Um, now, I did say that, and I only say that. I didn't even say that jokingly. You know, Pipewire is, you know, when it comes to like with the networking and all that stuff and being able to route audio, yeah, Pipewire is for people that can't figure out how to use Jack. But using Jack is not a difficult thing, is it? Either of you no. who use Jack. Not, <laughs> Once you have not, it not, not set really. up, it's mostly the, if it weren't for you actually doing the hard work of figuring out what to do to get it working properly, uh, I, I don't mean, think I would have. And ever. I mean, like, honestly, <laughs> if you're using, like, PyPyre to hook into our door or whatnot, it's basically the same thing as using Jack. Uh, and, like, that that was by design. It's supposed to be as transparent yes. as possible. There's also, like... Uh, you, you can use PyPyre as a Jack client as well, so there's, like, interop there. You can... You can, like, I mean, that's like, you, you'd want something that see, what we're waiting on is the, you see, uh, Bitfig has already added uh, native pipewire support using the Jack module and all like, like if you're going to be using a Dodge, just use also direct, unless again, you got to route it, then you just want to use Jack because pipewire's extra steps. It's adding, you're going to add higher latency and, uh, less stability. How much latency though? Realistically speaking. significant. Like you, like there's entire threads on fucking with pipe wire latency when it's dealing with like different module sets with like mm-hmm. pulse and jack and stuff like that. Now, I'm not and saying pipe wire itself is latent. What I'm saying is like dealing with like its version of like its jack implementation of like trying to get the work. Then you don't even get net jack at all. Period. That's gone. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's that's a big one. I'm constantly refreshing on that bug tracker issue. Like one day, one day I can try it out, <laughs> and I don't have to. I, Cause like it's it's weird again using using Franken Fedora running Pulse Audio on mm-hmm. on modern Fedora. I don't want to. I got to, but I don't want to. It would be it would be nice to not have to do it. But right, and you know, and then you get like just complete like disconnects of understanding like the latency that we're talking about, which would be round trip, not block latency. Then we get into this whole other video that I'm going to be making trying to explain to people. You know. Because, you know, case in point, Michael, you said 2.7 milliseconds. That's not even the latency we're talking about. Like, that's a predefined um, set between a 128, 256, 512, 64, 32, 16 buffer size. That That's a locked-in latency. That's just your buffer size. That's not your actual latency. But I need, like, visual aids, which I don't have to explain that. <laughs> and can, if you can, think can't you do about pipewire like the abstraction layer that it is what it's doing it makes sense that yes it is going to introduce latency because it's a much higher level thing than if you were dealing with jack directly or if you're dealing with also directly yeah <laughs> well yeah but i mean the beautiful thing about pipewire pipewire is brilliant by the way i have nothing but good things i like in, pipewire yeah, like huge for, yeah, for, for 99 percent of <laughs> desktop, everything you need to do desktop yeah. usage 100 percent there but we're, I mean, things that are going to be targeting targeting Pipewire in the future natively. Chrome already has experimental support. Bitvig is the one DAW that's got direct. That's what we're waiting on, man. Mm-hmm. That's when things get interesting. Also with the NetJack, but yeah, it's an abstraction layer on top of things. You know, like a Jack is out sitting on top of Alsa. Then you got Pipewire, which is going to be working with Jack, which then is sitting on top of yeah. There's it. It's inevitable a, that yeah. at that point it's inevitable because you're just adding more and more software on top of the software that's already dealing with whatever firmware you happen to have running 
The moral <laughs> of the story here is make sure that you get like some nice flint and some gravel and like maybe maybe some lime, and then you can start compiling your software from source. In Indeed. And at the end of the day, just use ALS for everything because that's a horrible idea. <laughs> Remember when you could only hear sound from one source at a time? <laughs> if you want to go back to those days. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for tonight. If you want to get in touch with us, uh, Pedro already told you that contact form and all that. But if you want to get in touch with me, just at Vin Stone on Twitter or just at Vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com, I'm there. I'm always in our Discord doing the things. I am a giant pile of rubble in the shape of Jordan Swung. You can find me rocking on at Burning Fool on Twitter, I guess for now, until Twitter explodes, or twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. And uh, you can find me uh, talking about my new processor on Twitter. That's uh, other than the, the thing about the show going live that was the latest tweet. <laughs> at what, what more do you have to say? <laughs> uh, plenty. I love my new processor. 5800X 3D. Love it. It's amazing. There were some credits. <laughs> I still don't know how to play Uno. I have never played a game of Uno in my life. I could probably... Well, you'd get like this hybrid reality rules versus what I remember. Rules. Right, like it's it's what people think Monopoly's rules are versus like <laughs> what it actually says in the, the rule house book. rules, right. yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we gotta, we gotta thank our advisors, Omega Star Theron. We gotta thank our executive producers scrolling up very slowly. Barb Ramp, Scott Michaud, Tomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Jerome, or Kohaku, George Pebble, Tomaj Anunoid, and our little Nicky fans, Chicago Sax, Abstraction, and Super Deaths Duet. Plenty of sea monsters coming in like Ryder, X Machina, Truggy, Verifanuda, DS, and Joe Darkwing, Renault. How about some Death Notes? Death Notes like Nova K, Basil, uh, Chad, Romeo, Marson, Renee, Leonardo, DeCrezzi, Kim, Smashley, Chris, Stephen, Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2, Not Wad, Stephen, Dirty Dean, Back, Game of Tron, Dodger, Xanthorus Gaming, Rue, Turnover, Cheesy Bacon, Stein, Stein Mr. Fox, Fox Dog, Fine, Spine, and all of Hope. Okay, I was squinting too, man. Uh, hey, look yeah. at all the beautiful chair links. We love each and every one of you individually, but there's so many of you. You're like a tsunami of names covering our face just tonight that we can't quite get to all of them. However, we do got find upstanding cannibals. Carl! <laughs> Mike, our there in Linux, Nero, Holdius, Noctilus, Johnny, Chef, Gamatron, and of course, Unoid. Unoid! Shows up a couple times on the list. Yeah. Unoid. <laughs> I'll get that pizza from him one day. <laughs> Mark my words. Mark, Mark, Steve. Happy birthday, Jordan. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny, Johnny, that's the one. Johnny Five. Johnny, man, you don't know your characters from the room. Danny you don't. Five. You don't know Mark, about Lisa and Mark and Denny, or is it Danny? I don't know. I'm not even gonna pretend that I've watched the room all the way through. Five dudes. <laughs>